Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll present the definitive guide to white pocket squares to help you master this subtle yet sublime menswear accessory. <laughs> This video is another installment in our Definitive Guide series, and you can find the playlist for the series here. Today's topic is the white pocket square, which can be an understated finer point for casual and business ensembles, and which is a necessity for semi-formal and formal dress. Few things can add so much to a look with so little as a white pocket square can. And by that, we mean a true white square, as just pulling out the lining of your breast pocket isn't a viable option. Of course, we've made many other videos on pocket squares. As an example, you can go here to see Raphael's extensive collection, and we talk often about how they can be the perfect accent piece to finish an outfit. We often emphasize the rainbow of color options you've got available to you, such as in this video about pairing your pocket squares with your shirts and ties. But ironically, it can be the plain white pocket square that's the most difficult to get perfectly right. Now, you might think it quite reasonable to ask, it's just a white pocket square. How could anyone mess that up? Well, in fact, it is the finer points, the details and minutia, that set apart an acceptable square from an exceptional square. With help from today's video, though, you should learn exactly what to look for. One more note before we dig in further, though, we're not talking about white pocket handkerchiefs here today. A pocket square is a decorative element that is meant to elevate your look, whereas a handkerchief is a utilitarian tool that isn't meant to be displayed. For the easiest way to remember the difference, just look to the old saying, one is for showing, the other's for blowing. Delving into the history might help you distinguish further between these two items, so let's cover that. But remember, you can always consult the timestamps in the description or the chapters on the video slider to skip past this section if history was not your favorite subject in school. In antiquity, nobles from Babylon to Egypt and from Greece to Rome were known to carry squares of fabric on their person. These were usually dipped in perfume or fragrant oils to help mask unpleasant odors, similarly to how one might use a sachet. A cloth was also commonly carried by people of all stations to mop up sweat or other messes. It didn't become a fashion accessory in the West until the late 14th century. King Richard II of England, who was often mocked by his contemporaries for his foppish dress and luxurious habits, was ridiculed for commissioning from the royal tailor pieces of cloth used to wipe his mouth and nose. Within a century, nobles and royals all across Europe, like Caterina de' Medici and Elizabeth I, were seen sporting ornate handkerchiefs on their person. And as part of his efforts to standardize manufactured goods, King Louis XVI of France even mandated that the official size for a handkerchief be 16 square inches. Because these articles were so fine and valuable, most people actually tried to avoid using them to wipe their faces, and this is where the distinction between the pocket square and handkerchief started to develop. With the rise of the modern suit in the 19th century, gentlemen settled on putting their fine pocket squares in their jacket's breast pocket and reserving inner jacket pockets or trouser pockets for their handkerchiefs. This then was when the pocket square found its permanent home. And while suit wearing isn't quite as popular today as it used to be, we're sure that any style connoisseur will agree that a breast pocket looks particularly bare without a pocket square. So now that we know where pocket squares came from, what makes a good one? Overall, a good pocket square will hold folds well, sit attractively and securely in the pocket, and remain looking elegant while doing so. 
For retaining shape and position then, the most important factors are material and size, so we'll cover those first. Nothing is going to affect overall functionality more than material, so for a white pocket square, the material of construction is probably the most important choice you're going to make. So let's take an in-depth look at the most common materials used and what you need to know about them. Because it's relatively cheap and easy to clean, cotton is often used to make inexpensive pocket squares. But many cotton weaves can crease in an unattractive way, don't hold folds particularly well, and can go limp if not pressed regularly. So unless you're sticking with a classic straight fold, a cotton square is best used as a handkerchief and not a pocket square. There are exceptions for particular weaves though, and one of these is cotton flannel. Cotton flannel is a medium weight cotton with an iconic napped appearance, an exquisitely soft and unique texture that gives the fabric more hold, and it's less prone to unsightly creasing, so it can be used for both edged and puff style folds. Many white cotton pocket squares can look a bit plain, which again is where quality and craftsmanship come into play. For example, Fort Belvedere offers a distinctive cotton flannel pocket square in white that's made from 100% Italian cotton in a subdued twill weave, and it's the ideal weight to sit securely and elegantly in your pocket. This is a perfect example of how the best materials and craftsmanship can elevate any product. And of course, to learn more about the many products for which cotton is used, you can find our video on cotton here. Next, with its unique sheen and soft feel, silk is particularly popular for pocket squares, including white ones as well. But as we emphasize in our video on matter silk, its ability to hold and radiate lustrous color and fine detail is one of its key strengths. So in a sense, silk is wasted on a plain white pocket square. Visual interest can be added with a more complex weave like jacquard, dupioni, or phi, and even a plain white silk pocket square can still look elegant under the right circumstances if you're going for a certain understated flair, but keep in mind that it will probably look best in a puff fold and not so much in any other orientation. Unlike the ever popular silk pocket square, pocket squares made from wool are relatively rare and are thus an accessory for the true connoisseur. In white, they have a subdued and understated appearance and pair particularly well with suits in flannel or other heavier weight fabrics. They can hold simple folds very well, but they tend to look bulky with complex layered or even puff folds. In the Fort Belvedere shop, we don't carry a pocket square in white in pure wool because we feel that wool is better used for adding pops of color to a heavier weight winter ensemble. Perhaps the ideal solution for reaping the benefits of both wool and silk then is to put both of them together. And as such, we offer a number of different silk wool pocket square blends in the Fort Belvedere shop. With these, you'll get the structural integrity of wool and the lovely outward appearance of silk, but as in other cases, we believe that these are maximally used in colorful options to best take advantage of the natural characteristics of the two fabrics. Still, even as a white pocket square, silk wools are easy to fold, hold their shapes relatively well, and aren't as shiny as pure silk. So if you're looking for something that falls fairly equally between silk and wool without the distinct characteristics of either, this blend might be a good choice for you. Along with silk, linen is also one of the most popular materials for pocket squares and for good reason. It's stiff enough to hold its shape for both simple and complex folds, and the variety of weave options available create a plethora of visual interest. From heavy damask linen to light and delicate cambric linen, originally made in Cambrai, France, unique textures make linen one of the best materials for white pocket squares. 
And for a look that's sure to set you apart, consider this handcrafted open weave linen. It's great for warm weather and it's sure to draw a bit more attention to your pocket. And in addition to this looser weave, Fort Belvedere also offers a linen weave that's a bit less stiff as well. Thanks to the skilled artisans of Italy and their antique looms, we've managed to create a white linen pocket square that's as soft as cotton, but with all the elegant appeal of linen. It's great for all seasons and all folds, making this linen pocket square one of the most versatile options available on the market. You can learn more about our linen pocket squares here, and more about linen as a fabric in general here. This versatility can be approximated with cotton linen hybrids, but in our experience, it's best to go with this 100% pure, softer weave linen. And speaking of things to avoid, longtime viewers will know that we here at the Gentleman's Gazette try to eschew all synthetic fabrics whenever possible. These don't breathe well, they're harder to clean, their manufacturing is often detrimental to the environment, and generally they just look off. This is certainly true with the common synthetic alternatives used for white pocket squares, the most common of which is probably polyester, which is often used as an alternative to silk. It has an overly slick texture that can be unpleasant to touch, and it often looks too shiny. Another common silk alternative is acetate, which has all of the problems of polyester, and on top of that is likely to tear or wrinkle even more easily. Rayon is used as an alternative to cotton and linen, but it's more difficult to clean and it fades and bleeds easily. So, as with many things in life, it's probably best to keep your pocket squares en naturel, although we can't give you too many more examples here on YouTube. Now that we've covered what materials you should and shouldn't look for in your white pocket square, let's move to our next main consideration, size. Louis XVI may have decreed that all pocket squares should be 16 inches square in size, but at the risk of les majeste, we have to disagree. Though we don't want to lose our heads over it. <laughs> The size of a pocket square is important as it will be a major determining factor in how well it sits in your jacket pocket. If it's too small, it's constantly going to slide down, becoming unseen, and if it's too large, it can bunch up and create unsightly interruptions in the line of your jacket's chest area. Standard sizes vary from around 10 square inches for heavier fabrics like wool tweed, up to 18 square inches for some silk varieties. On that note, a closely related consideration to keep in mind here is the material of your pocket square, as slicker silks are going to have a tendency to slide down into your pocket more, whereas heavier and coarser weaves are more likely to bunch up. So then, speaking generally, you're going to want pocket squares in thicker fabrics to be of a smaller size, and pocket squares in thinner, smoother fabrics to be in a larger size. As such, be wary of any retailer that sells all of their pocket squares in the same dimensions regardless of the material used. At Fort Belvedere, though, pocket square sizes are dictated by what looks the best, not what costs the least. For every fabric type we offer, we tested eight different sizes of square, and this rigorous testing yielded some interesting results. For instance, the heft of our cotton flannel pocket square allowed it to keep its form at the rather small size of 12 square inches, and the softer Italian linen sat better at 13 and 3 quarter square inches, while the stiffer Irish linen worked best sized at 15 square inches. Beyond material and size, then, the next most important consideration for a white pocket square are the details of its construction. We've already dealt with weaving methods and general craftsmanship in the materials section, but when determining the quality of a pocket square, how its edges are finished is also an important consideration. 
pocket square edges can be finished in one of two ways, hand rolled or machine stitched. We go into greater detail of these construction techniques in this video, but to summarize, it's just as you might expect. Machine stitched edges are folded over and simply stitched by a machine, whereas hand rolled edges are carefully rolled by hand and then stitched by hand as well. If the edge is rolled to the obverse or front side of the pocket square, it's referred to as a French roll, whereas if it's rolled to the reverse or back side, it's referred to as an Italian roll, not to be confused, of course, with these Italian rolls. And just like a fine Cuban cigar, hand rolled is always going to be better than machine finished. Hand stitching will allow for just enough malleability for the pocket square's fabric to drape, puff, and fold attractively. Meanwhile, machined edges are often going to look too sharp and rigid overall. Hand stitching also allows the artisan to miter the corners, making them thinner and easier to fold. But with a machine, the edges have to be folded on top of each other, creating an overly bulky look. Finally here, hand rolled edges are less likely to come apart and unravel, adding to the longevity of your pocket square overall. Keep in mind as well that edges also have an aesthetic function when it comes to white pocket squares. Silk pocket squares tend to have soft edges that aren't very noticeable, so they won't function as much of a decorative element unless they're bordered. Cotton, wool, and linen pocket squares, on the other hand, often have stiffer edges. These are sometimes incorporated into the overall look of the square with details like creative stitching, colors, textures, and patterns. On that note then, let's now consider more of the details that you can find in a white pocket square. A great deal of the visual interest of a white pocket square does come from its materials and the natural texture that can be found in its weave, as we discussed previously. But additional detailing can also add an extra pop that will really complement some looks. Our first example of this would be stitching. With hand-rolled edges, you can sometimes find exposed edge stitching that serves as a decorative element. It's often found in a contrasting thread to present more of a pop of color. X-stitching is a renowned pattern that is particularly difficult to execute well, which is why we're so proud of the X-stitched pocket squares available in the Fort Belvedere shop. Next up here, we'll cover edging, which involves adding or subtracting fabric from the edge of the pocket square. With pin spoke edging, for example, tiny repeating shapes are cut into the border of the pocket square, which has a nice rustic effect. Conversely, some pocket squares will have a laid on border. Historically, adding lace to the edges of pocket squares was exceedingly popular, and though it's largely fallen out of fashion for men today, you can still sometimes find pocket squares with lace edging or ones made entirely out of lace, usually cotton or linen. These are definitely going to be statement pieces, of course, and you'll want to have a supreme amount of confidence to wear them, lest you be accused of having a doily in your pocket. On more casual white pocket squares, it's not unusual to find examples that have minute imagery, usually embroidered in the corner or on the border. This method is used in various circumstances, including honoring an organization like the Masonic Order, a hobby like fishing, or commemorating a special union, but if one goes too far, it's easy for this embroidery to look overdone and tacky. So we would recommend restricting yourself to more simple patterns, such as this versatile polka dot style available in the Ford Belvedere shop. Alternatively, you could consider our Four Suits pocket square, which we're sure would be Sammy Davis Jr. approved. Overall, focus on understated designs that are still interesting and fun. Moving from the micro to the macro, with some pocket squares, you might find patterns or figuration woven directly into the fabric. This is especially common, for example, with jacquard silk and damask linen. 
personally, we wouldn't really consider these articles to be true white pocket squares, as the excessive patterning gives them an ornate level of detail that's essentially functioning in the same way that colors would, even if the pocket square happens to be monochromatic. And when applied to pocket squares, these fabrics also tend to put us a bit too much in mind of rented suits, so we'd recommend that you leave them to tablecloths and upholstery. As with heavy detailing, we also believe that logos and brand names don't really belong on a white pocket square. To ensure that you never have to worry about someone else's name or symbol poking out from your pocket then, Fort Belvedere branding is intentionally discreet. And along those same lines, unless you actually happen to share your initials with a certain Monsieur Louis Vuitton, you may want to consider monogramming your own initials onto your pocket square instead. In our dress shirt guide, Raphael explains why we feel that monograms on shirts should be more discreetly hidden. But when it comes to pocket squares, the situation is a bit different. While shirts were traditionally monogrammed as a utilitarian concern to be able to tell them apart in the washing or at the dry cleaners, pocket squares were traditionally monogrammed as a way to set the wearer apart while wearing them. Therefore, a more prominent location and more elegant script is perfectly acceptable. When embroidered in contrast stitching, gentlemen traditionally used dark or jewel tone thread to achieve a distinctive look, but with a white pocket square, the most refined and sophisticated look is achieved by using same color embroidery, which is to say, white. As such, at Fort Belvedere, we offer linen pocket squares that are hand embroidered with one initial in a subtle white thread with a very high stitch count and a slightly raised profile. The result is a monogram tasteful enough to be displayed as the center point of a crown fold or hidden away if desired. With all this said then, the amount of detailing and what kind of detailing you have on your pocket square will largely be dictated by where you wear it. A white pocket square can, of course, be worn literally anywhere you're going to wear a jacket, from the least to most formal of occasions. But subtle components are going to change from occasion to occasion. Because white is supremely versatile, you truly have carte blanche when pairing your white pocket squares with more casual ensembles. Therefore, we recommend having some fun with it. Consider a colorful, contrasting X-stitch, or go with a piece of colorful embroidery. Again, mentioning our four suits pocket square, for instance, it might bring you some good luck on a poker night. To dress up a casual look with a bit of foppish flair, you could consider a white silk square in an elegant and exuberant puff fold. And for something more understated, yet still a bit playful, you could consider an open weave linen. Moving next to office settings, you could probably pull off most of the looks we just mentioned in a more casual office. In more formal settings, though, you'll want to avoid silk or shiny silk wool, as well as embroidered detailing. Instead, we'd recommend sticking to linen or cotton flannel with plain edges or contrast stitching in subdued colors. And of course, simple folds like the straight fold or perhaps a crown fold are going to be your best bets here. For semi-formal social and business events like weddings or garden parties with clients, you're still going to have ample room for a bit of creative self-expression. You might consider traditional or open weave linen with plain or contrast stitching in a fun color if desired, and in a more conservative fold like the straight fold or crown fold, and moving up to black tie, for a classic look, you could consider a plain edged linen square in a classic one or two point fold. Keep in mind that one of the reasons that formal events are so elegant is because of their adherence to time-tested rules, and this also holds true for pocket squares. Therefore, for both morning wear and white tie, we would recommend going no bolder than a plain-edged white linen pocket square, perhaps with an embroidered initial if you so choose. 
The straight fold is most traditional here, but for something a bit bolder, you could consider a rabbit ear, puff, or shell fold. And on the topics of black tie, white tie, and morning wear, you can find comprehensive guides to all three as part of our black tie guide on the website here. Now that we've covered all of the basics of the white pocket square, we can briefly discuss the matter of cost. As you may have guessed, this is going to be dictated primarily by materials, construction, and detailing. As a general rule, you're probably going to want to pay between 40 and 80 US dollars for a quality pocket square. Anything under $15 is probably going to be made from inferior materials, and anything under $30 or so is probably going to lack finer points of detailing. Depending on the materials used, the $40 to $80 price point is probably going to be the sweet spot for quality in terms of construction. Of course, an accessory as timeless as the white pocket square will be able to be worn for years indefinitely if you take good care of it. As such, this will give you a relatively low cost per wear. Be wary when purchasing anything for over $100 or so, though, unless it has details like fine Italian lace or hand-done embroidery, as there's a good chance you're going to be paying more for the name brand of the pocket square and not for its quality. We hope that the offerings we mentioned from the Fort Belvedere shop caught your eye, and by the way, buying pocket squares in the shop in increments of 3, 6, or 12 will net you some considerable savings, so you might want to consider stocking up. In today's video, I am, of course, wearing a white pocket square, and I've based my look around it simply using the grayscale. The square, which is from Fort Belvedere, is made from 100% fine Italian linen with hand-rolled edges, and I've got it oriented in a crown fold today. Other accessories from Fort Belvedere today include my platinum-plated sterling silver eagle claw cufflinks featuring black onyx as the stone, my two-tone solid socks in black and white, and my black knit tie featuring a fine horizontal stripe in white. My simple white boutonniere is a prototype design, but it fits into the grayscale feel of the outfit. My tweed herringbone jacket lends a bit of casual flair to the outfit, and while it is gray, it does also contain subtle tones of brown and green. My shirt features narrow stripes in gray and white, my trousers are plain black, and my shoes are black single monk straps from Velasca. For all of the Fort Belvedere accessories I'm wearing in today's video, as well as, of course, a wide array of different pocket square styles in white and otherwise, consider visiting the Fort Belvedere shop here.